What was that first year like when you went out on your own full time? Uh, chaos. <laughs> okay. Total and complete chaos. How so? Well, you, you, I, I think that I thought I kind of had a grasp on what it was going to be like and what it was going to feel like, and you have no idea what it's going to be like, what yeah. it's going to feel like. Change is inedible. Like every every success happens because you change something and you and you it was a fear that was within you. Motivation only lasts for a short amount of time. But discipline is what carries you forward. I can't do this on my own. Period. Are you looking at your business in terms of emotion or are you looking at your business in terms of what's practical? I still believe that America is the best country in the world. Where can kid of immigrants with no education become a physician? This is Small Business Celebration, where we're celebrating small businesses for big breakthroughs. Welcome, Visioneers, to another fantastic conversation here on Small Business Celebration. And we're going to be talking about how to make reductions to your business without compromising quality or productivity. We're also going to be talking about the keys to finding the right employees through a staffing agency. And of course, you too can also play along in the ever popular Visioneer game. And our guest to help guide us through this entire conversation this week is Leo Wisnott, the owner of Old Ironsides Construction. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Thank you. And for visioneers who don't know who you are, who are you and what is it that you do? I'm Leo Wisnett and I'm owner of Old Iron Sides Construction. We're a general contractor. Now the reason we're talking with Leo today is because he's had a very fun and interesting evolution in his business. Because when you first started this out, you had a regular job working for another company. I actually had two regular jobs. I was actually working for an insurance company and teaching at Cal State and I was doing these jobs on the weekend, I was doing kind of side jobs, you know, little construction projects here and there. My business partner now, who was worked with me at the insurance company, he was actually a salesman there. He just kept pushing me to get my contractor's license and to start this business because I'm a disabled veteran. Mm. And so that disabled vet veteran owned business status within the construction community for the state and federal contracts uh, gives you a special status, sort of. What branch of the military were you in? Army. What was the tipping point where you said, okay, I should make this full time? The insurance company that I worked for did payroll, workers comp, safety and risk, HR, and they rolled it all into one. As a consultant doing that, I would regularly have 60 to 80 clients. So I would have 60 to 80 small businesses that I spoke with and talked with every single day. And so over the years of doing it, I got to be pretty close with a lot of these guys and I would ask them more intrusive questions into the financials of their, you know, situation and right. just being curious and some of the numbers that kept coming back at me, I was just astounded <laughs> with. And so I knew that what I was doing, I, I was pretty capped out financially. Mm -hmm. I certainly wanted to achieve more. Yeah, I finally just stepped out and said, man, let's just do it, man. Let's just go for it. Where did the interest in construction come from in the first place? My very first job ever at 18 years old, I moved here to Bakersfield. Right. I grew up in Lancaster and Palmdale. Okay. So I grow, I move here, middle of the summer, my would-be father-in-law eventually gets me a job framing houses. I remember being a part of a crew that built something and walking away with like this real sense of pride. Like, look at that dude, that's super cool, man. We just built that. You know? Right. I barely did anything. I was just a laborer getting yelled sure. at all day, but I still felt really good. And then as my construction career sort of progressed, I kind of stayed in construction for a while. I just really liked it. I liked the ability to take some random stuff and build something cool. When I transitioned out of, out of construction mm -hmm. and into safety and risk, that was one of the things that I was really missing in my professional career. As a safety and risk consultant, you don't go and build anything. Right. If you're really, really good at your job, nothing happens. <laughs> right? It's kind of a letdown. Yeah, there's no injuries, <laughs> there's no accidents. Do you know what I mean? There's right. no building, there's nothing, right. there's no creation, it feels like. So, right. you, so you focus on creating different programs and you kind of have fun in that, but it's not really the same as looking back with a sense of pride 
of a photograph, a remodel that you did. Right. Like, man, look at that. Like, look or at you drive past a property and go, look at, I did that. Yeah, you tell the kids, oh, you know, like that old man. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, Dad, we've heard, we hear this every time we drive past it. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> what was that first year like when you went out on your own full time? Uh, chaos. <laughs> Just okay. Total and complete chaos. How so? Well, you, you, I, I think that I thought I kind of had a grasp on what it was going to be like and what it was going to feel like, and you have no idea what it's going to be like, what yeah. it's going to feel like. You know, you still have to earn an income and try to grow this business. You have to pay all of your bills. You have to pay all the company. It's just, it's so much stuff. And then I think the most challenging part of it, and, and looking back, I could do it so much better now. Like if I had to just go back and <laughs> sure, do what I knew sure. now, I could, I could crush it. Uh, right. It's finding the right people. Mm. I mean, that is the biggest, and that's still a challenge. It's, I think it's a challenge for every business is finding those right people. The name of your business is Old Ironside. Mm -hmm. Why that? First Armored Division, U.S. Army is Old Ironsides. And so that's where we took the name from. That's the only division that I served in. I always really liked the name and thought it was cool. It's right. an old military name. It goes all the way back to the USS Constitution, which is called Old Ironsides. Is there a certain com camaraderie that you have with a name like that that perseveres through your whole team? I hope so. <laughs> um, I know I see it in the guys who have been with us for a few years and have kind of stuck it out. It's one of the greatest joys that I have is seeing them buy new cars, move into new houses, buy new houses. When I see them on the weekend, I see them, you know, in social media and I'll see them out, you know, enjoying the time with their family, those kind of things. And I see their life get better because they're steadily employed you know, making pretty good money at a construction company. I really take great pride in that. That means a lot to me. As your business has grown, you've got the job in Seven Oaks. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Now we're on to bigger things. That leads you more into commercial work. Yeah. Why have you made that shift and that change? For instance, that $300,000 remodel, mm -hmm. great job, great client, loved it. That's kind of the cap. When it oh. comes to residential remodels, sure, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not doing, at least not in our community, you're not right. doing a million dollar remodel on somebody's house, right? right, right. And so if, as we grow our business and we want to continue to grow, we have to step outside of that and mm -hmm. into the commercial projects and into the commercial space where, you know, $200,000 is pretty small job on the commercial side. Right, so right, right. we got to step from that into this new arena and, and up the ante. Right. Yeah. And also in that growth, those projects lead to bigger projects. Yes. And the, what are those projects that you're gearing up for now? So here's what the, sort of the other piece of, of the growth of a, of a construction company moving into that space. First, you have to prove that you can be in business. Right. And then you have to prove that you can be profitable. Right. And then you can apply to get the bonding capability. So these big jobs have to have a big insurance company behind them right. with a big insurance bond that basically says, if these guys fail to do the job or fail to do the, guy, the, the job properly, we'll pay you anyways. Right. And so that bonding capability, you know, for a small company like ours, just a startup, we were able to get a million dollar bond from, from the start, which is really super good. And so now we're capable of doing a million dollars worth of bonded jobs. So that bond has to grow over time. We can't, you can't just go out and build a $25 million project in a, as a construction company. You have to prove year over year over year and you have to grow that bond. And so that's the challenge now will be maintaining our bond capability as it corresponds to our current projects. So we can have a bond out for, you know, $200,000 here, $300,000 there, $400,000 over here, and then you kind of run out of space. You you got to you got to finish this one over here before you can use some more of your bonding capability. And so it's a practice of kind of juggling all of that with the schedules and what jobs you're bidding and what jobs you're not going to bid. So new challenges. 
And if you're looking for a new house to go with that new construction on your business, might I suggest that you talk to Mike Saba, a Zillow Premier Agent with Watson Realty. Born and raised and never left Bakersfield, give Mike Saba a call at 661-203-8406 or reach him at MikeSaba1 at iCloud.com today. Mike Saba is also the sponsor of our Visioneer question. And if you've got a question, you've got a thought, something you'd like to learn about here on Small Business Celebration, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and your question could appear here on Small Business Celebration, just like Francois, who asked, we need to streamline our business and make it more efficient. How did you identify where reductions can be made without compromising quality or productivity? I really thought about this question when you sent it over to me because the truth is I did not. Really? It was really my partner, Patrick, who stepped up and said, these are the things that we're going to do. And I was very much against some of them because I don't know. <laughs> I just sure. Fear. I don't know. But he said, these are what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to reduce payroll tremendously. We're going to turn off these things, whatever they were. Right. Um, monthly expenses associated with various things within our business. And we're going to get rid of this portion of our advertising. This portion doesn't work. Mm. Basically, overnight, we just, we just cut out so much stuff. And because he really stepped up and pushed the issue and was like, this is what we're going to do, I saw the results. You know what I mean? Right. I saw three months from that, I saw the turnaround that sort of took place. I think it gave me some more, some more trust in him and his decision making and a little bit more opportunity to say, you know, I, not only do I not know everything, but I don't need to be in control of everything. Sometimes I can just, you know, cause being in a partnership, it's not, it's not easy. Right. So. Your partner said, we have to downsize. How did you choose who to keep? Very early on in our business, we, through the grace of God, found this man and he became our superintendent. Who is? Joshua Porter. And he absolutely loves construction. I okay. mean, he eats it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. He loves it. And he's a great leader. He's a great mentor. He's a great coach. There's nobody on our team that would look at Porter and say, I work harder than you? Absolutely not. Or look at him and say, I know how to do this better than you? Absolutely not. He can build a house from the ground up. When he says, this guy is not effective as a member of our team and he needs to go, he's right. Because he knows, because he's there every single day. And so um, finding, finding that, uh, yeah, I'm, for military terms, if you would refer to me as like an officer, he would be my NCO, non-commissioned officer right. out there in the field. You know, he's sort of like the first sergeant for all the troops, you know, right. out there leading everything. So, yeah, I mean, when he says somebody's not effective, then that's that. When your partner went through and said, these are the things that we're going to cut on, how did he identify what those things were? I think he just looked at things that he didn't feel were effective solutions to the problems associated with the business, mm -hmm. whatever that might be. And you looked at some of them and said, absolutely not. Yeah, that's how I felt <laughs> at the time. I was like, no, we can't do that. You know, we can't do this. We can't do that. What are we going to do? You know, if you, if you lay all these guys off, how are we going to get the work done? Right. And what I found out very shortly was those guys weren't really doing the work. Uh. These four guys, I think it was four or five guys that were left out of like 18 right. were the guys that were getting all the work done. Oh, okay. And so when I saw that, I was shocked, first of all, that we had that many people on our payroll that really weren't producing at the level that was necessary to be there. Right. And that we could do so much more with a much smaller team. Right. And so today we have, a, we have a fairly small team. I think we have 11 guys right now, you know, and we do way more than we did back then. And we do it a lot faster. And uh, the other part of it too is a real push to go more onto the subcontractors, mm. to go more with subs doing, doing very specific portions of the work. Learning, learning too that everybody's not capable of doing everything. And the people that specialize in what they do, they specialize for a reason. They're really fast and they're really good. 
Now that you've had that remodel for your business done here with Leo's help, you get that first electric bill and it makes you absolutely cringe, might I suggest you reach out to BSW Roofing Solar and Air. Let them explain the benefits of saving with the sun today. 45,000 customers can't be wrong. Call BSW Roofing at 661-327-7663. That's 661-327-ROOF or at bswroofing.com today. And BSW is the sponsor of the Visioneer game. And if you're not familiar with the way the Visioneer game works, I have a random word generator here on my phone. I have no idea what the word is, but more importantly, neither does Leo. And Leo has to take each one of three words and somehow associate that word with his business. And Visioneers, you two can also play the Visioneer game. Simply pick any one of the three words that Leo gets. Simply go ahead and associate it with your business in the comment section and make sure you leave the name of your business in with the comments. Now, Leo, you do realize that the fate of the entire construction world is based upon your ability to get these three words correct. It's not going to end well. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good build-up. <laughs> Shall we start? Let's go. Okay. Your first word is orchestra. Mm. There is nothing like a project that just goes smooth. Okay. Where everybody, every trade shows up on time. There's no issues with the customer. Everything is just like this beautiful symphony, right? And I'm up there as the conductor on QuickBooks doing the bookkeeping and the payroll and making phone calls and making sure the insurance is in, in, the, in the right place and everything goes smoothly. But, but every day is, it's an orchestra. It's a, it's, I mean, when it goes smoothly, it is beautiful. It's sweet music to your ears. It, it really is, because it's like, wait, we're already done with that? <laughs> really, that's, that's a final job walk? And you look back, it's like, yeah, six weeks, wow. We finished that in six weeks. Well, congratulations, you got the first word. Correct. I nailed it. Well done, done, Goodbye. well done. Okay, our second word is C, as in C to shining C. Mm, the C, all right, so the C is like all the decisions that you have to make as a business owner. There mm -hmm. are so many choices and so much information to pick from and understanding just, just, uh, discerning the information that you receive and what course to plot as you go through this process, man, it feels like an empty ocean and you're out there all by yourself. Sometimes it's just overwhelming, you know, and uh, just learning who you can rely on, who has, who has the right information to answer specific questions, where to go for that. It just feels like, it feels like the sea sometimes. Nice, well done, <laughs> two for two, well done, okay. And our, four, our, our last word, are you ready? I'm ready. This one's gonna be a piece of cake for oh. him. Formula. Formula, yeah, it goes back to the, it goes back to the orchestra, right? right? That perfect formula for getting from point A to point B, sort of back into the navigation, right, of navigating the sea you learn the right formula and how to maneuver everything and get through the process of, of this project just in time to move on to something more sophisticated, more complicated, and you have to develop a whole new formula. And that's, that's the growth of your business. Because, because, for instance, in our business, we could stay doing purely residential. Right. We're really good at it now. Mm -hmm. We could just do that until you know i move on in right. life right and right but what's the fun in that so we have to develop a whole new formula to move on and and move into the commercial world the prevailing wage the department of defense all the things that we want to achieve well congratulations three for three well nailed done it. you nailed it <laughs> <laughs> well and you brought up something that was very important in all this is that the symphony is a team where we're sitting here is your home office. Yes. To say you're a Raiders fan. Yes. Is an understatement. It is. <laughs> it's been a lifelong obsession. Why is that? My dad was a Raiders fan. Okay. And then 
I was born in 77, so I was oh. six years old when the Raiders won the Super Bowl in 83. Right. So I just remember watching that game. And then in my younger years, I watched the career of Bo Jackson, mm. which was phenomenal. You know, he would have been a Hall of Famer for sure uh, if he hadn't been injured. Right. And then I grew up in the era of, you know, Dr. Dre, Easy E, and so the Raiders had a whole thing with, you know, gangster rap, and so it just, I think it just it cemented my, my love of the team. How has your appreciation and love for football been a corollary to your business? Everything that goes into a professional football team directly correlates to any other business, mm -hmm. right? How so? You could look at me as either the head coach or the general manager. Mm -hmm. I'm not on the field. I'm not doing the work. If, I'm, if I have a tool in my hand, there's something very wrong with this job. <laughs> sure. I can do the, some of the work. I'm not as good as any of my guys. I can do some of it, but if I have to get out there and do it, that's not a good sign. Right. But like I was talking earlier about Porter, you know, being such a good leader. He's a great quarterback for the team out there. Right. And there's guys on my team that are, you know, left tackle, running back. Everybody kind of has their, their specialty, but everybody's pretty good with the ball in their hands. Who's the center? Who's the center? That's an easy one. It'd be Ethan. Yeah. He's a big guy, first of all. Sure, he's bigger sure, than sure. me. And he's been here the longest of all of our employees. And he's capable of calling plays and handling the offensive line. You know, he's, uh, he's definitely a leader. He's very young. So he's really grown up with us. Yeah, he would definitely be definitely fit in as the center. What does the Super Bowl in your business look like? I think the Super Bowl for us would look like <clears throat> landing a multi-year, five or ten year contract with the Department of Defense mm -hmm. for construction and construction maintenance services. Right. For all of the bases that are around us. Because there are a ton of military bases around us, people just don't even know about. Because they're they're smaller, they're associated with the reserves, or you know, there's just a, there's a ton of them. Right. And so those are that's the stuff. The ultimate goal is to to get and operate in that space. And if you need a new photocopier to go in with that new construction that Leo's got going on here for you, might I suggest that you reach out to Executive Copier Solutions. Executive Copier Solutions keeps your Kern County office running smoothly. Call Executive Copier Solutions today at 661-322-0190 or visit them at execcopiers.com where they say, we can't sleep if you can't print. Call Executive Copier Solutions at 661-322-0190 or visit their website at execcopiers.com today. Exec Copiers is our sponsor of this Visioneer question and Visioneer Lana asks, we're looking into hiring a staffing agency to improve the quality of our employees. If you could do it over again like the first time, what would you do differently this time? In the area of hiring, you know, initially it was do, going to the existing employees and saying, do you know anybody? Right. You know, that's that was sort of that was our recruitment tool. Right. Eventually, uh, we moved on to taking in actual applications, doing some kind of advertising, and then a good friend of mine went back to work for a staffing agency that he used to work with. That transition has been tremendous for us. Now, we've we struggled with their definition of what the right employee for us would be. Mm. And we came up with a hybrid solution. They were very flexible with us. And so what we do now is we do the advertising and we do the initial phone interview and discussion with the individual. Once that's completed, then we send them in to the staffing agency. They do all the staffing agency's paperwork. And then we call them out for what we call playing tools. So essentially okay. they they come out to the job site and they work with us for about a week probably. And then at the end of that period, if we, if we feel that they'll be a good fit for our team, we go ahead and offer them a full-time position. Just one week? Just one week. Oh, that's it's usually it's just one day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can figure it out in one day. Yeah, because you know, over the phone, anybody can say, I have all these tools, I know how to do all this stuff. Right. And on day one, we know. Literally, like in the first 20 minutes, if we walk into a job site and we're doing specific work and they said they know how to do it and they are just completely lost, we know, you know, we've had guys that we've called out before 
phone interview, everything was good, and they come out and they have absolutely no idea what they were wow. doing. And we just say, hey, you, you know. That's the best thing about a staffing agency is you can just say, your assignment has ended. And they have to, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. So about half of our employees now came through the staffing agency, through this whole process. And we continue to use it today, and we will continue to use it moving forward. Which staffing agency are you using? Continental Labor and Resources. Oh, wonderful. And, and who's your contact over there? Harold Brown. Ah, Harold's a great guy. Harold's an amazing guy. We worked together at the insurance company. Me and him oh, okay. started on the very same day. Right. He came from Continental to go to the insurance company. I came from the oil fields to go to the insurance company. And so we had a lot of the same background and we spent a lot of time together. We were on the same team the whole time. so. And business is about connections, mm -hmm. those friendships and relationships you make. How did you and I meet for this conversation? We met from Alfred Valenzuela okay. from Executive Copier. Oh, uh, the sponsor yeah, of the Vision Your Question. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. He's been a member of my BNI group for a few years. Uh -huh. He's gave me a few referrals. Uh, we've done business together, just a super good guy. It's no secret that for a lot of business owners, they're struggling right now. Is the American dream dead? No. Why not? Well, first of all, what is the American dream? Mm. It's a white picket fence, a house, a couple of cars, a couple of kids. Right. Maybe. Right. If that's what your American dream is, but America's about America's really about individualism and what you see as the American dream. And so, you know, the opportunity is there for everybody to do whatever it is they want to do and however they want to build their life. That's what freedom's all about. Keep going. Even if you have to change strategies, tactics, even if you have to completely change businesses, business models, don't give up. If your dream is to own your own business and, and to have that, that freedom to be away from clocking in and clocking out, don't give up. Just keep going. Leo, this has been a real privilege. Thank you for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. Yep. Thanks for and, me. and if vision years want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? You can call us at 661-237-7200. Or you can visit our website at www.old-ironsides.com. Social media? We're on Facebook, Instagram. I think that's it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. And if you enjoy Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify and leave a comment. We're going to make sure that Leo gets all the comments, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. And I'll be right back with my final thought. <laughs> Are you trying to figure out how to build a better business? Well, might I suggest you go to the Small Business Celebration blog? Yes, yeah, simply go to smallbusinesscelebration.com forward slash blog. Learn from our past guests on what works, what doesn't, so that you can grow a strong and profitable business. Simply go to smallbusinesscelebration.com forward slash blog today. The rocket designed to go again. Recently, my family met up with my extended families for some very much needed vacation down in beautiful sunny Southern California. And as we were lounging about the pool one evening, we looked up in the sky and saw a rocket. Now, rockets are not that unusual. In fact, they take a very straight kind of approach as they go up into space or a slight, maybe a slight arc. But this one was rather odd. You see, it was kind of zigzagging all over the place and more alarmingly, little bright shiny objects seemed to be coming off this thing and it, it struck us with kind of a, an alarm because was this a rocket that was breaking up over metropolitan LA? Was there gonna be destruction because of this kind of a thing? But alas, the rocket seemed to stri straighten itself out and disappear into space. No destruction to be had. And we found out the next morning that SpaceX had launched another rocket from Vandenberg Air Force Base. And that rocket was deploying communication satellites in Earth's lower space orbit. So no destruction was to be had. Well, a few days later, I was back at home in the swing of things, growing the business, and I was having lunch with a visionary friend of mine, and he was talking about how the business community is very much in flux right now, or at least he perceives it that way, because 
he's had a lot of transitions with vendors. They come and go. Customers that he's had forever have come and go. He's got new ones, of course, to help grow and bolster things up. And friends that he has known for years, they've just seemed to disappear off the face of the earth. And I told him the story about the rocket that I'd seen on vacation and reminded him that rockets too go through stages. They lose parts of the, of the rocket to help boost them, get them up into space higher, and they lose their payload to go ahead and do other things. But the thing about SpaceX rockets is that the heart of the rocket is designed to land on a pad and go again. Just like us, we as business owners, we are the heart of that rocket. It doesn't matter what the payload is. It doesn't matter what the trajectory is. We always seem to manage to figure out how to land and come back home and be the rocket that's designed to go again. I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with Leo Wisenup, the owner of Old Ironsides Construction, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. And we'll see you here again next week when we celebrate another small business making a big breakthrough. What kind of house weighs the least? Mm. An outhouse? Close, close. Hot. Try a lighthouse. A lighthouse, yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> what kind That's of... That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's more. <laughs> what kind of a bird lives at a construction site? Mm, I don't know. A crane. Oh, yeah. Um... I was going to say woodpecker. <laughs> That's your turn. Your turn? Your turn? Real bad dad joke? No, no, no. no, no my, you got my one dad joke. <laughs> Off camera, of course. Yes, preferably. <laughs>